FCF or Fuzzy Finder does exactly what it says on the tin. It will let you fuzzy find things. Now, what things exactly? So if you run it with nothing at all, it'll just fuzzy find on your file system. Then you can pass that path into whatever you need it in. But what if we actually do pass something into Fuzzy Finder? What's it going to do? So today we're going to have a look at some of those use cases and just some of the other cool stuff you can do with Fuzzy Finder. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So if you somehow have absolutely no idea what a Fuzzy Finder is, basically it'll let you do pattern matching without having an exact match. So for example, let's just have a look at what Fuzzy Finder actually does. So if we just run Fuzzy Finder, so if you don't have it installed, you can install it through pretty much all your standard package managers through Arch, you can get it on Pac-Man, on Ubuntu, you can get it with apt-get, and pretty much every distro will have it in its main repo. So it shouldn't be too difficult for you to actually get. So if we just run that, it'll start searching through my file system for basically all the files that are available. So if we wanted to actually find something in here, Without using a fuzzy finder, you would have to have the exact name for something. So instead of that, what you can start doing is you can just start typing stuff. And as we can see, the letters that it's matching on are highlighted. So it's not doing an exact match. It doesn't have to be this exact string, TWJ, or we can just chuck some other random letters in here. So I've got this absolute garbage bit of text in here and it's still managing to find stuff because it's not looking for an exact string it's looking for a string that has this contained within it in this order basically so that's one of the benefits of using a fuzzy finder so instead of having to have an exact match like for example d menu is another fuzzy finder so if i wanted to bring up something like thunderbird Instead of having to actually write out Thunderbird, I could write out, say, B-I-R, and that will then search for that as like a part of that string, basically. So that's the benefit of actually having a Fuzzy Finder. Now, I was mentioning before that you don't have to run Fuzzy Finder like this. This is the base way to run it. So, say we want to just bring up anything, like we could, I don't know, write art.png, I have a file called that. So that'll actually let me bring up that. But what if we don't want to search through everything? Because maybe we have a really big file system. Because 193,000 files, it's not the slowest to run. If you have a quick enough system, it's going to be fine. But maybe you're on a bit of an older system. How can we make this so you have a depth limited search? So if we quit out of this, I've actually just done this pretty much just before. So if we run this one right here. So find dot dash max depth four. So what this is going to do is find will let you basically search your file system. And dot means we're going to start from our current directory, dash max depth will actually set the depth you want to dive into from your current point. So at depth four, it's going to jump four folders in basically, or four jumps in. So if I run this and pipe this into FCF, what it's going to do is, so FCF, like DMN, you actually take a new line separated input, and then each line of that actual input will be a option within FCF. So if I run this, as we can see now, instead of 190,000 files, there's only 42,000. Now it's not exactly clear that it's only four depth. Let's just drop it down to one and I can show you what that exactly looks like. So as we can see here, now this is just showing only what we have in my home directory. So it's not actually jumping into any of the folders like it was before. So if I just run that with depth two, that should give you a good idea of what that actually looks like. So not depth 12, depth two. So basically, as we can see in here, this VirtualBox folder right here. So what it's doing is it's jumping into the VirtualBox folder and then it's showing the macOS thing in the VirtualBox folder and it's not going any further than that. It doesn't matter if that's a file or a folder, it's just not trying to go into that. Same with this .cache slash Clementine, all this stuff in here. You've got stuff in your home directory and then you've got stuff in your home directory slash something else basically. And that's all it's doing. So I didn't show you this before, but when you actually select something in FCF, what it's going to do is actually output that selection. For example, this GTK RC-2.0. So if we select this, what it's going to do is actually output that thing we selected. So this is where it gets really cool. So what if instead of piping stuff from our file system in, we were to do something like, for example, this. So pipe in, yes, backslash n no. So what that's going to do is yes on one line, no on the second line. We pipe that into FCF. And as we can see, now we have this pretty cool selector thing here. So you have a yes, no selector. So if we type in no, that'll start bringing up no. If we type in yes, obviously that'll remove the no option. Or we could just go directly up to that with the control and then J and K. So the cool thing about this, let's just select yes. As we can see, that is now actually outputting yes. Now, why does this matter? 
So this matters because you can then integrate FCF into other programs to use it as a way to select things. So you don't have to select on your file system. You can fuzzy find select on anything you want. So for example, I've got this use case where I used it instead of D menu in my book menu script. So if you haven't seen that video, basically book menu is a program that's a generic bookmark handler and I'm using D menu as the prompt to actually select the bookmark. So if instead of D menu, I was to use FZF, what does that actually do? So as we can see, we've got this list of all of my bookmarks. So let's say we wanted to bring up something like, I don't know, um, GitHub. So we start typing in GitHub and now that's the only option there. And if we press enter, that's then gonna pipe that into Brave and it's gonna open up in my browser. So that's just really cool. So obviously I can quit out of this terminal as well and then this is gonna keep going. But that is one of the really cool use cases for FCF. You don't have to use it on your file system. You can just use it as a generic fuzzy finder. So now that that's out of the way, let's just have a look at some of the options for fuzzy finder and just some of the customizations you can make to it. Okay, now I'm not gonna go into literally every single thing that you can run with fuzzy finder because I think that's a massive waste of time. You guys can test out some of the stuff for yourself. I'm just gonna go with some of the stuff that I think is pretty cool. Now, one of the first ones I think is cool is this dash dash phony option. So what this will do is actually disables the fuzzy finder option. So if you just want it to be a simple selector, you can use that. So for example, you could do that with your yes, no selector I had just before. So we could pass this in. So what is it, phony? And now if I type stuff in here, it doesn't do anything but we still have the ability to select yes or no. Now, I would never actually disable the fuzzy finding just because it's a bit quicker to be able to type stuff, but if for whatever reason you need to be able to do that, then I guess that's an option for you as well. Now, what other cool stuff do we have in here? So I don't really think any of this stuff's too important. You can change how tie breaking's handled, you can change the algorithm, you can change a lot of the searching stuff. I don't really think that's too interesting. I like to leave it just as it is by default, but if for whatever reason you need to actually change that, like you need to change the line delimiter or something, then you can go ahead and do that. You can say you don't want to sort the result, you can reverse the order of the input. Now, that's not interesting for me. The stuff that does start to interest me is with the interface and onwards. So if you want to disable the mouse for whatever reason, you can. I don't really find any reason to do that. But the other thing you can do that's cool, I always love this, you can actually enable cyclic scrolling. So if we just run this without cyclic scrolling, if I get to the top and I keep trying to press K, that doesn't do anything. But if we run phony with dash dash cycle, now it'll actually keep going. Generally, you're not gonna have this few options that it's gonna matter, but if you just wanna do a simple selector, then it probably makes sense to also include the cycle option. So let's see what else we have in here that I care to talk about. We also have some stuff with the layout. Now this is also one where I think is pretty cool. So I can't really show it with this one, but let's go with one of the longer ones. So this one right here, this FCF with a depth limited search. We can actually change the maximum height of our FCF window. I'm not really sure why you would ever want to do this, but you can do it anyway. So if we do dash dash height, not dash height like I tried just before, and then give it a percentage to set, so dash dash height equals, and then a percentage, let's say equals 50%. So now instead of taking up the entire terminal window, it's just gonna take up 50% of it. I don't really see why you would wanna do this. I guess if you wanna still see your terminal output for whatever reason, then you can do that. But generally, you're probably not gonna do this. You could even do it for like smaller amounts, like let's say 10%. Now it's gonna be fairly small. As I said, I don't really know why you would wanna do this. Maybe you've got something on your terminal that relates to what you're fuzzy finding and that's why you'd wanna do it. But besides that, I can't really think of a reason to do it. You can set a minimum height when you're actually setting the maximum height. I don't really know why you'd do that. Why don't you just set the actual height? Not sure, but that's an option there. Now this next one actually is kind of cool. So you can actually change the layout of Fuzzy Finder. So if we run this again, just with this search, as you can see, it's got the selections on the top. It's got our prompt down the bottom, but we can actually reverse that. So if we go dash dash layout and then put in something like reverse, now, as we can see, the prompt is now on the top and all of the options are down the bottom. I was using this with my Fuzzy Finder Jump built into LF. Generally, I'm not a big fan of this. I like my prompt being at the bottom just because that's where my eyes generally tend to drift to. So it's a bit easier to 
actually use like that for me, but maybe you want it the other way around. And you've also got the option of doing reverse list. So what reverse list does, we'll actually put the selection you have at the top, but keep the prompt at the bottom. Now, obviously none of these will actually change the core functionality of FCF, but maybe there's use cases for where you want to have one or the other. It'll really depend on how you like looking at the program. Maybe you always want to use it in one way and not in another. That's up to you though. Now we also have the option of doing dash dash reverse. I'm not going to run it because it's basically just a synonym for dash dash layout equals reverse. Not sure why that option's there, but it's cool that it is. You can also set a border. So this actually, it doesn't look too bad. I wish it was kind of a border around the entire thing, not just the way it actually looks. So if we just run that with the border option, we have this border around the top and the bottom. I don't think it looks too bad, but I'm not a big fan of it. I'll just move my webcam so you can see it continues along the bottom down here. But yeah, as I said, I'm not a big fan of that, but you could do that if you really wanted to. So you can change that from being a Unicode border to being an ASCII border by doing the dash no dash Unicode for whatever reason. Maybe your terminal doesn't properly support Unicode characters or you don't, I, I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe for some reason you don't want to use Unicode characters. I think this looks a little better anyway. You have a dashed border now instead of a continuous line. I don't know. It's going to be up to you. You're probably going to be able to use one or the other unless you're using some really old system. But whatever you want to use, go right ahead. As I said, I think the ASCII one looks a little bit better though. So we can also set a margin. So by default, FCF keeps itself pretty close to the edges of the screen, but if we wanted to change that margin, we could actually do that pretty easily. So there's a couple of different ways. If you just pass in one percentage, that'll set the margin for the top, bottom, left, and right. So if we do that and set it to like 25%. Now it's pretty much in the center of the screen. Obviously that's too much of a margin. It was just done for the sake of basically showing you what it looks like. If we set that to zero now, this is how it looks by default. So maybe you do want it a bit further in, like maybe maybe 5% will look fine. I don't know, whatever you wanna do. Personally, I don't particularly mind it being directly on the edges, but maybe you want a margin for the top and the bottom. So to do that, then you could do this second option right here. So the first one will be the vertical margin and the second one will be the horizontal margin. So we have a 5% vertical margin, so that'll be on the top and the bottom and a 0% horizontal margin. So the horizontal stuff will still be along the side. And if we run that now, as we can see, that's what that basically looks like. So the next couple of things are about the way the prompt section looks like. So we have dash dash info. So if we run that one, basically what that's gonna do is change where the uh, number of files thing is actually shown. So by default, it's shown above it, under it. Well, how is it shown by default? This thing right here, so this 42,000, that by default is shown above the actual prompt text, but maybe you want it to be inline. So we can do that by just doing dash dash info equals and then inline. And now as we can see, that's on the same line as the actual prompt. I think this actually doesn't look too bad, but maybe you don't want to see it at all. And if you don't want to see it at all, you can just hide it. So if we set it to hidden, then it's not going to tell us how many files are actually there. So maybe if you're doing say a yes, no select, you probably want to hide it. So there's also an alias for that by doing dash dash no dash info instead of using the dash dash info option. We can also set the prompt text. So by default, the prompt text is this little arrow right here. So if instead of using that, we want to change to something like select a thing. Now you have to put a space at the end if you want there to be a space between the prompt and the prompt text. So just make sure you do that, otherwise it's going to be directly up against the edge. So if I run that now, let's put a colon in there as well. Now as we can see, it's select a thing and there's a space before you actually start typing. So that looks pretty cool. But maybe you want to keep the prompt text the same, but still have some sort of message about what you're actually doing. Now to do that, you would use the dash dash header option. So if we type that one in, equals, and we'll do the exact same thing. So select a thing. Now, instead of actually changing the prompt text, it's gonna put a bit of text directly above the thing. So if we combine a couple of those options to make it look not too bad, we are dash dash info equals inline. So now we have the number of files actually inline and we have the text telling us what we're doing directly above the prompt. I don't think this looks too bad. I don't know why this isn't default behavior. I think it actually looks better like this anyway, <laughs> except the selector thing. Selector thing, obviously, not great, but you get the point pretty much. 
So if you need to change the actual color scheme for FCF, then that's actually an option. So if we do dash dash color, then we can set a base color scheme and or we can actually change some of the colors. So some of the colors that are available to change are the foreground, background, preview, foreground, background, and all the rest of this stuff in here. It's very, very easy to set them. It's There's an example basically right here, so I'm not gonna go into that, but I will show you what some of the actual different color schemes look like. So if we have a look at say, for example, right now I'm just running the default color scheme, which is dark. So if we change that to something like the dash dash 16 one, so that'll use basically just your base 16 colors rather than trying to use the full color abilities that are possible. So if we do that, we set it to 16. So if you're on a terminal that only supports 16 colors, then you're not actually gonna notice any difference from running this. So I run that, and now as we can see, this is blue, this is red, and this is yellow, and we're actually using my actual terminal color scheme rather than the custom colors that it's got set within FCF. So as I said, I'm not gonna go into how to customize the rest of this. There's a pretty good example right here, so feel free to look at that one. And the one I did wanna go into though is previewing. So you can actually set a preview command and then preview the files that you're looking at. So obviously this will only work if you're using FCF with files or something else that you can possibly preview. So if we just run FCF with the dash dash preview option, like it's got in the example here. So dash dash preview equals, and then we need to actually run a preview command. So let's just use the one they have right here. So head, then set the number of lines you wanna output on, and then brackets like this. We run that and now as we can see, we have this preview window. So it'll say that this one's the directory, so we can't actually run that one. But let's say for this GTK2RC. So this will actually output this file. Now you don't actually have to use something like head. You can use anything you can output text from, but being a preview of a file, you probably want it to be meaningful. So for that, you could do something like the pistol preview program. Now I've done a separate video on this. I'm not gonna go in depth to what it does, but basically it'll let you do pretty previews in a really easy way. So if you wanna look at something that actually does a colored preview on, like let's say my ZSHRC, as you can see, now we have this colored preview, we have italics, and it just looks a lot better than just using head. Now, obviously you can write your own preview script for this as well. You don't have to use pistol. You could use something like my LF preview script. So if we just type that one in, scripts slash LF slash preview, I think is what it, is called, if I remember correctly. Now, if we go to ZSHRC, as we can see, we've got a fairly similar preview here because that's actually doing the uh, same preview on it, but let's just have a look what we have in here. There we go, that was one example. We had a JSON file. So we've got a bit of different previewing here. So this is just using the highlight program. I've also done a video on my actual preview script. I think it's the same one as the pistol video. So feel free to go check that one out if you actually wanna see how this preview script works. I reckon I could probably do like another 20 minutes just on FCF and some of its use cases and even some of the options because I haven't even touched key binding yet. So if you wanna rebind the keys, every single key in FCF is rebindable, but that's all in the man page. And I think I've gone over pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this video. Obviously, as I said, there's a ton more I could do, but I think I'll leave that up to you guys to actually go and experiment. If you do want to see another video on FCF, feel free to ask me and I'll be happy to do it. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my Discord and all of my other social links. So feel free to check any of those out if you want to chat with me. I've also got my support link. So that's my Patreon and all of that stuff. So feel free to use any of those if you want to support the channel. But obviously, you don't have to if you don't feel like it. But any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform. So my BitTube and my library. So feel free to use any of those if you want to watch my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now. And I'm out.